The contempt that people have for social media is all well and justified if it's due to how it can distract you from the real world. But when you see the mainstream media criticize social media, it's never for a noble reason, is it? It's never out of concern for the users of it. In fact, you take the veil of social media off of mainstream media's criticism, and usually the crux of the journo's concerns are that normal people are having their say in the town square. How dare they? A square that used to be solely reserved for them and those with money behind them. That's why big tech companies have become such boogeymen to the press. Not because they're unaccountable, not because they avoid tax, not because they're monopolies. No, 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 no. There are plenty of big businesses with those characteristics. They include the usual media outlets that are constantly bitching about big tech. Big tech companies are hated by elites in dinosaur media because they have leveled the playing field. Think about social media. It's the closest we've ever gotten to a meritocracy in the communication slash media landscape. You can't solely be successful on YouTube because you kiss the ass of an exec or advance the narrative of a powerful backer that wants it advanced. The capacity for nepotism is very, very reduced on YouTube. What? You think Ben Fordham could be a YouTuber? Maybe Ellen Jones can. Let's face facts. Premier Dominic Perrottet has fallen off. He started the year low-key, not gonna lie, on point. But now he's doing some pretty cringe shit. He's putting in a land tax, no cap. A land tax, no cap. Dead ass. Dead ass. Anyway, Penny Wong, I'll see you at Creator Clash 2. Subscribe to NordVPN or some shit. I'm Alan Jones. Like and subscribe. The most important part of media's hatred of social media is that companies can't blackball people for not towing certain lines anymore. Of course, this is an absolute, far from it. There's many exceptions, obviously, but no one can argue seriously that social media has made speech less free. And that's why right now, if you tune into Australian media, you will hear a chorus of voices demanding the regulation of social media, often using the unrelated cases of children cyberbullying each other to argue shut it all down. This makes the curious case of the PR guy so much more interesting as this forced the journalists to actually come clean with the reasons they hate social media. And that is, he does their job better than them. He does it more honestly, with more engagement, Therefore, he's a massive threat. PR Guy, just in case you don't have a phone like I do, is an anonymous Twitter account that look, it essentially shares all my views. You happy? And it's not me. I swear. He's just conveniently anonymous. PR Guy calls out shitty mainstream media journos and manages to disrupt the narratives that they all attempt to sow in tandem by dominating the Twitter trending section with his own hashtags. And may I just say, sucked in. There you go. Thanks to social media, the press no longer has a complete stranglehold on the narrative. And just so you know, because journalists are all serious people, all working on serious public interest stories with much larger things to worry about than their own egos, they've obviously taken the advice from their queen and just ignored him and gotten on with the job. Obviously I'm being sarcastic, they haven't. They're obsessed with him, none more so than world record chopping board thrower, the Whaley Israeli, all five foot one of mini RV Yemeni himself! And I know what you're thinking, hang on, can you call RV Yemeni a mainstream media journo? Maybe not. But look, his opinions are pretty much exactly the same as Sky News After Dark, and his viewership is probably better, so really, what's the bar here? Harvey is suing PR guy for defamation, which I'll get into later because I don't exactly know how you can defame an ex-IDF conspiracy theorist who was convicted of assaulting his wife. To start the lawsuit, Arvi's gone to Twitter and got them to agree to unmask the anonymous PR guy, but not without shouting a bunch of baseless conspiracy theories in the process, of course. Mostly the PR guy is secretly a Dan Andrews info warrior paid to engage in psyops to get Victorians to submit to the tyrannical reign of dictator Daniel Andrews. Because as everyone knows, the only way you could ever say something positive about a government is if you're paid by them, of course, because everyone in Australia, much like Arvi Yemeni, is borderline literate and can't read policy. In short, Arvi suing someone alleging that they said something that they had no basis to say, and in doing so, he's saying a bunch of shit that he has no basis to say. Watch this clip. It's incredible how this man's mind works. Now this account went as far as defaming, attacking, maligning anybody that opposed the Premier. Myself, well, I've been blocked from that account from almost the beginning. 
but it hasn't stopped PR guy from constantly defaming me at times, getting those defamatory claims trending on the platform. Tell me, if there was somebody in Daniel Andrews' staff that were, you, that were paid to troll opposition, do you think the public should get to know who that is? Yeah, 100%, yeah. Where is he getting his ideas? He blocked me. I don't like Dan Andrews. He must work for Dan Andrews. You can't not like me unless you're paid not to like me. Somebody works in Dan Andrews' office. Yeah. And they're potentially working for the government under a secret hidden name, trolling online. Do you think we should unmask that person? Of course, definitely. Unmask them as soon as possible. Now, what would you, in one word, describe the person that manages to unmask Dan's operatives? A liberator, a fighter for justice. I like you. I was just gonna go with hero, but I'll take that. <laughs> You can tell this man is treating this question like it's an impromptu quiz in year 10. <sighs> okay, lay it on me. <laughs> it's amazing. It's like this man's journalistic hero is that guy that used to impromptu interview housewives about Nappy Sand. Avi, I don't use the word hero very often, but you are the greatest hero in Australian history. He's very clear, Avi is completely banking on this account being run by a staffer to Dan Andrews. And because the press are in so much of a bubble, they are unable to conceptualize that someone genuinely might like the Labour Party. And so they've sided with RV Yemeni, all these Twitter addicts to use the most overused Twitter meme in history. Oh, I don't know which one's worse. The chopping board commando, or the guy that points out how we're constantly and unconsciously shitting on labour for no reason as a matter of routine. And they chose Arvi! You really have to get this idea out of your head that they're all secretly cheering for the Labour Party behind closed doors. This began even before Arvi with the Sydney Morning Herald's very own mouth-breathing section editor. This is the hottest sleep apnea machine out. Osman Faruqi falsely accusing, with no evidence mind you, lobbying firm Hawker Britain as being behind PR guy. If I said something half that stupid, you'd never hear the end of it. But Faruqi, still out there, all the time, nine newspapers regularly offering up his objectively moronic opinions, I guess as a palate cleanser, as the only good thing about that man's existence is thinking about him for even a few seconds, makes anything else in the press far more palatable. Now, anonymous Twitter troll account that goes by the alias of PR Guy has made a name for himself or herself by pumping out Relentless pro-labour propaganda. This coming from someone on a 24-hour news channel with a green screen behind them saying relentless propaganda is being pumped out by one Twitter account. Sorry, that's what angers me about it. It's just unnecessary expense. Just use the white wall like I do. The account has now been accused of indulging in defamatory attacks against Dan Andrews' political and ideological opponents. In October last year, PR guy took aim at rebel news presenter Avi Yama let me pronounce his name properly, Rebel News presenter, Avi Yemeni. Oh my God, she can't pronounce his name! It's shit reader, whatever the f it is. But what do you say to those who say, argue, well, anonymous accounts and anonymity is really quite crucial in social media and you shouldn't try to unmask an account, even if it's a troll account? Usually I'd agree, but when you cross a line, it doesn't matter who you are, um, if you do something unlawful or if someone has a civil claim against you, you shouldn't be able to hide behind an anonymous uh, thing. Just That doesn't give you a free pass. So I more than welcome everybody to have anonymous accounts. I think it's a bit cowardly. I don't know why someone, in, in most of the time, why uh, someone wouldn't put their name to something. Uh, you're obviously not proud of it, but... Um, that, that's in general terms. There are reasons where people, you know, they're trying to protect their job or whatever it is. I understand they want to uh, use an anonymous account, but that doesn't give you a free pass to defame or break the law. Whoa, PR guys, f***ed. You're about to get unmasked by this literal free speech warrior. Hmm. That's a very interesting softball question masked as a hardball question, Rita. And usually I'd agree, but because I personally disagree with this account, I've been forced to abandon my principles. Avi, steady on. 
No court has proven that PR guy has defamed you or broken the law. In fact, I'd wager right now what you just said was more defamatory than anything PR guy has ever said about you. We're putting up with you wasting taxpayer resources with this stupid legal action. At the very least, you could be intellectually honest about it and just admit you're only doing it because you really want to know who PR guy is. We get it. Your personal hell would be being a judge or masked singer for all eternity. We know you want to be the greatest hero in Australian history, but unfortunately, Osmond's already taken that position self-proclaimed. But come on, don't pretend you've been defamed by an anonymous Twitter account. Peter Dutton, who is shithouse as he is, has a far better reputation than you do, and he lost a defamation suit where someone not anonymous said something far worse than what PR guy said about you. So do you get where we're going with this, Harvey? You were convicted of assaulting your wife. You can't get much lower in the eyes of the Australian public than that. Maybe back in Israel, you could argue that your wife was Palestinian, but, uh, that's not how things are done here. The project also cheered this on. This is how much journos hold regular people in contempt. They'd rather side with a conspiracy theorist, Zionist extremist, convicted criminal, citizen journalist, than an actual citizen journalist. Racking up more than 80,000 followers with his largely pro-Labor tweets during Victoria's lockdowns, some say PR guy is really... A Dan Andrews staffer. Inside the Premier's private office. Or an employee of a Labor-aligned PR company. Whoever he is, he's about to be unmasked. Courtesy of controversial far-right figurehead, Avi Yemeni. Look at this. What the f*** is the difference in reporting between Sky News, Sydney Morning Herald, and CBS or whatever the f*** owns 10 now? Who claims PR guy defamed him by calling him a threat to national security and a criminal. Everybody has the right to privacy, but the moment you act unlawful, that mask doesn't give you a free pass. That's when anybody can go to the court and find out who you are. It's the same thing with PR Guy, and that's what we're doing. The federal court has given Twitter two weeks to hand over PR Guy's name and email address, so the defamation case can go ahead. We're going to get to the bottom of it pretty quick. It's not the only time the courts have waded into the internet sewer of late. Google has been forced to pay the former New South Wales Deputy Premier John Barillaro more than $700,000 over a series of YouTube videos posted by friendly Geordies. It was never about money. It was about an apology. Oh damn, two Labour shields being shut down by two men who look and speak surprisingly similarly. There is a response video coming to that soon. I think the internet's changed a lot. You know, in uh, 10 years ago when the Arab Spring was happening, there was so much optimism about the power of social media to bring about good. And, and, and very clearly, you know, the people that were standing in Tahrir Square, for example, or in Libya, were using Twitter and it had a, it had a real function and it was a, a democratising force. There was this, this genuine hope about what what a force for good social media can be. I, I think everyone that has been in those spaces, though, can see that it has become something entirely different. So it's not that now. I do accept the point that she makes that, uh, you know, there are still people for whom it is very important to have some anonymity. Yes. But I do think also that kind of um, slightly utopian view of what the internet can be or social media can be uh, is is not the reality that we exist with now. That is the first time I've ever heard Hamish McDonald say something stupid. Dear, I like social media when it was used to bypass state media in order to depose Murabak and Gaddafi, but now it's bypassing state media here, and I'm state media here. Now it's bad. Do these people have one self-reflective thought ever? Do they ever think about holding themselves to the same standard they hold others to? even when they're talking about others in exactly the same context, in the same paragraph? The cognitive dissonance is insane. I think the entire press establishment is going to be very disappointed if it comes out that PR guy has no connection to Labor. And I'm a gambling man, so let's heighten that disappointment. Come on, Harvey. If you're truly confident that PR guy works in Dan's office, take a punt. I'll bet you $10,000 that PR guy isn't employed by Daniel Andrews. If he is, I'll donate it to Rebel News Australia. And if he isn't, you have to donate that money to the Victorian Labor Party. Oh, I'll sweeten the deal. Any stipulations you want, neighbor. You wanna up the money? Go for it. I'm that confident that you're a crazy conspiracy theorist, Harvey. You talk out of your ass about Daniel Andrews all the time. Put your money where your mouth is up your ass. Maybe, since you've already spent thousands taking the case this far in court, you must know something I don't, so come on, 
What's another bet to you? Especially when if it turns out that Parrish had thought the entire media nexus with you as their little cheerleader are uh, feeding the public false information about a guy that is constantly pointing out how they are feeding the public false information. So just remember, if PR guy turns out to be just some normal person, you're going to look like such an idiot, RV. What will it say about all the other bullshit you peddle? Probably not much to your audience. Hashtag take the bet, Arvi. And hang on, let me just get out my direct labor shill line. Just one second. Yeah, yeah, high tech, ASIO stuff. We are going to get it trending. Shill shirts available at Friendly Geordies. Do you like the experience of listening to me quietly? Good, because now you can do it live if you're in the following cities. Canberra, I think there's a couple of CC left. Ulladulla, Avalon Beach, Bathurst, all the crown metropolises of Australia, and of course, the Central Coast. Thought I'd forget about you? Well, I almost did and was clearly padding while I was thinking for the last city. But go see my show if you are in those following seats. You won't regret it. Please share and comment below. Comment.